Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to the start of a brand new RimWorld run. Now this one is going to be a continuation in in theme, in concept, if, if nothing else, of Hope's Run from the Nexology campaign. Now what's really funny about that campaign is I started this campaign with this archaeologist looking for Arquinex's stuff and literally the day after I started recording it, Tynan dropped a hint that an expansion was coming. And then two days after that, Anomaly was officially announced. And it seemed like the exact perfect expansion for the theme we're going for in the Nexology run, which is good timing, bad timing. It's hard to tell, depends on our view here. So we kind of wrapped up Hope's campaign. We didn't go and complete the Ar Arquinexus thing. We just sold the base one time and literally finished recording it um, just before Anomaly came out but I want to continue Hope's story. So this is gonna be a brand new fresh run, but conceptually it's gonna be a continuation of Hope the archeologist, except the world is considerably darker over here. Now we left that Arco Nexus run with Hope and uh, four other companions, total of five people, fully bionic up with like all cybernetic parts, wearing power armor and being genetically modified. We are not gonna start the campaign that way because, well, first of all, we actually can't set that up in the colony start, but also it would, arguably make things too easy. Now that's what we're looking for, but it was part of a greater campaign. So what I'm gonna do instead is we're gonna take a slightly different take. This is our alt history of what has happened and install, instead we are gonna be three exiled survivors. Now I'm gonna reclaim some of the names from before. So we're certainly gonna have hope. And I think we're gonna be gonna bring Smogger and Gomp. Those were, uh, those represent three of the five people that we did continue or leave the um, uh, the game with at the end of the next well, Nexology run. But here, they're gonna be they're gonna be different people, but we're reclaiming the names. That's gonna be okay. And I've made this little custom little start, this exiled survivor start, which is very similar to the naked brutality, although that's one person with nothing and no clothes. Here it's gonna be three people, and technically we do get to start with the clothes on our back, but no resources whatsoever. This is not gonna be an easy start. First of all, just getting food immediately is gonna be an incredible challenge. But I think we can pull it off. We're gonna randy random. We're gonna losing is fun. This might be an extremely short run. Actually, the biggest threat with going Randy random is on day one, Randy could send us a disease. And that could immediately end your run, that, which would be a little annoying. What if, okay, hold on. What if we start with Cassandra Classic on losing is fun? And then maybe after the first raid, which she's guaranteed to send pretty quick, we'll send over to Randy. Cause I wanna play on Randy cause he's very fun. But again, he could literally send us a plague on day one and just immediately end the run and then I'd have to go through the setup again, and that would be kind of frustrating. So let's do this, and we will switch to Randy, though, afterwards. So losing is fun. Reload any time is fine. Uh, lonesome. You know what? Let's call this uh, the trio for our random seed, and we're going to go ahead and generate it. Oh, you can see the mods that I'm running over here. Uh, that was very quick. You can rewind and, and pause. I'm not running anything that changed the gameplay. In fact, very minimal changes. Basically, just a mod for the camera and the colorized materials and a slightly different colonist mood bar at the top. The, the mod I used to run, the the, the 1.5 introduced colorized um, uh, colonist icons. When they get cranky, they turn yellow and then red, but I'm gonna run the colonist mood bar because I like those colors a little bit more. And it also puts an icon on them when they're sick, which is gonna make it a little easier to spot. I think I might wanna do a little bit more of a desert run this time. Although I say that, we're starting with no food. If we have no berries to pick, we're gonna have a real bad time. Let's, if we go and just look at one of these areas though, let's say, let's say here, 25% chance, 25% forge ability of agave. That might be a little too rough. Can we get a higher percentage anywhere? No, just 25% period in the desert. Um, how do you tell the difference in desert and arid? Cause that's temperate forest. Oh, is this arid? Arid shrublands over here. 50%. Okay, maybe that's what we look for. What I don't like in this area is we don't have any trading partners. These, I mean, we could make friends with this faction, but this faction here is the uh, the, the, the pig people who are start off hostile and will trend towards hostile. I like settling near one of these purple houses because that is gonna guarantee a decent trading partner. I mean, people will visit you regardless, but this makes it easier for you to set a caravan. This is all shrubland. I was thinking we might go a little bit more hilly. I like settling near a road. You know I like a road. We do have year-round growth in these places, although it'll be countered with considerably lower fertility. Just in our um, in our live stream campaign, we're in the we're in the boreal forest here, so I kind of want to go opposite for temperature. I 
kind of like that. I do think I want to go a little bit more mountainous than I have in the past. Maybe we accept that we're going to deal with a lot of insect infestations. Maybe I should go actually mountainous. Ooh, with caves, we'll have bugs on the start here. This has no caves. Now, this is going to cut down, I think, even more on our fertile area. We might be very reliant on trying to get hydroponics up and running. Ah, uh, this is going to be a hard start. Let's do it. Let's do it. We've got a trading partner there. The other one we can trade with is the uh, yellow tribals. Uh, and we're going to be pretty far from them, but a lot of times I, I'm fine with going to war. Ideally, if we were near two purple houses, it would be great because we could just trade between the two of them. They're on separate uh, cooldowns, but I think this is going to be okay. We are near polluted site, though. Is this going to give us a warning about it? It is going to give us a warning about it. I don't think I want to deal with that level of pollution. What about, okay, let's go here. Limestone, marble, sandstone. Okay. All right, I think this is groovy. Do I want to change the size? Hey, one, I won't go large. We went large in the live stream campaign that's currently running. We will go one notch up higher in medium. Give us a little bit more space, which has pros and cons. Chance of a little bit more resources, um, a little bit more time to prepare for raiders when they spawn on the edge of the map. On the other hand, your pawns might be spending a lot more time walking if you're not managing them carefully. So we are going to go with a create custom fluid ideology because um let's just click on i mean this i don't know if this is going to be a clone of uh of hope's ideology the first time around we do have some extra traits some extra memes available actually if i go back and go create custom fixed and pick this there's actually two new memes there's the ritualist over here as well as inhuman over here now i don't want to start with either one of these so we're gonna go back Great custom fluid and come over here. Now, I do like the idea of starting with human primacy first. So the idea here with our fluid one is we're gonna do something that just works for the very starting game, the very early game, and then we'll be happy to make some changes as we go, including perhaps embracing a lot of these void beliefs. But we're gonna start with something that's fairly easy early on, or fairly fairly straightforward early on. Human primacy is a great pick. Uh, bonding disapproved is actually very helpful, and it unlocks the production specialist role, which we're definitely gonna be looking for. But maybe, maybe I'll do transhumanist again, because that was a big part of our vibe with Hope's Run. Maybe we'll start with this. It means we can also start with um, uh, the nutrient paste dispenser. I mean, you can always start with the nutrient paste dispenser, but these guys here really won't care about it at all. And so we can work our way up to that. We Obviously, we're not going to be able to immediately because we're going to start with no resources. So it's going to be tricksy to get started. Um, but maybe we'll set this up just so we have continuity with the other one. The easier thing to do is probably to start with human primacy first and then add transhumanist later when you're ready to go. But I, again, I think this is part of the vibe. I'm not, none of these others really, really cry out for the vibe we're going for with the hopes run. So we'll start with transhumanist. We'll do this. I kind of wish there was ethics into the, uh, the randomized title for this. Um, what else are we looking for? So these are all locked in, which is going to be okay. A lot of these don't kick into our higher wealth though. So that's fine. Um, maybe we won't care about execution. We're going to, we're going to, you know, she's had a bit of a rough time. We're going to go and lift some of those restrictions we may have had to deal with before. Organ use. Sure. You know what? I think we still won't go cannibalism in this run. I don't think that's the right vibe for this particular run. Um, but you know what? Everyone should wear pants and shirts or no service. Uh, blindness, corpses, yeah, the execution again. We'll, so we'll be a little bit more chill about it. Should we, you know, just to speed up the game, we're going to go with very fast research. Dun, dun, dun. This all seems fine. Okay, we're definitely going to rename these roles. Now, one of the things I was wondering about is if we have the research specialist. Yes. Okay. Because the lab coat was added in with Anomaly. And it didn't show up as a required apparel for some of the specialist roles, right? If we take a look at like the leader over here, for example, the um, lab coat's not available as an option, but I had wondered if maybe it would be an option for the research specialist and it is. And this makes me extremely happy. So we're gonna do that. Um, let's rename the researcher to thesis writer. Excellent, we'll do that. And then our moral guide, this is gonna be, it's just like our therapist for this run. Yeah, I like that. And then our leader for this, um, I, 
kind of just want to call it leader. Leader administrator of used before for things may or may not. You know, it's kind of cool. I kind of just want to call him leader. Sometimes, you know, oops. I was trying to copy and paste instead of just type the C. Sometimes things just do exactly what they say on the tin. So we got the leader, the therapist, and a thesis writer. I really, I really quite like that. Um, ethical inter internment. I always say internment, but internment is different from internment. One's an N, one's got an M. Did I name these? Uh, what are we? Were we like nexologists? The nexology research group, right? Nexology research group? I don't remember what we were, but it's fine. So this is going to be our, not our faction name, although it might end up being our faction name as well. It's our ideology name right now. Um, I think I'll be going to stay with nexologist. And these are going to be nexologist. And the ritual room is going to be the artifact chamber. Artifact library? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I like this sort of um, puce, we're going to call this. I never use green as a color. I'm, I mean, I'm quite partial to blue. It's the reason, like, my, my channel color is kind of this vibe, and so I've kind of adopted it as, as that. Um, I do like the sort of pure white over here for, like, the idea of, like, labs and hospitals and things, but that's what we're using in our other anomaly run. So, unless we go, like, just, like, quite pink. Hot pink. With... I don't know why this symbol is appealing to me. Maybe because like, we could actually go with the cube symbol, right? And I'd noticed one of our artifacts was indeed the golden techno cube, which I like. What is this? Oh, that's Persona Mana Sword. Here, and we'll throw in um, uh, you know, I was I've been doing a lot of charge rifles as a specialty thing over here. Maybe we'll do an artifact um, assault rifle just so we've got some options. At any rate, cougars. There are cougars in your area. Hmm, anyway, Funeral of Artifice. Did it rename the, um... Did it rename these automatically? It might have. Exologist Eulogy is actually pretty good. Now, for our festivals here, I think what we're going to do, and it's, I know it's fairly cheesy, I think we're going to start off with a bunch of sky Skyline Festivals. We're going to redo these after we, once we, because it's our fluid ideology, right? We get 10 points, we get to rewrite our things. But to help us get an early boost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all these up to random recruit. So we can use these to boost our numbers early, and then we might change it to something else, or we might just not run these. But this is gonna be easy. And the, the reason with the um, uh, recruit, uh, the reason for the Sky Lantern Festivals is you can just do them outside. You don't need a fancy, high quality. Um, oh, I guess it was already on random recruit. You don't need a fancy, high quality uh, temple to run these. You just, you just grab some logs, and then you run those outside. But uh, these are gonna get replaced with something else as we go forward. Uh, Pew's machine shape. Oh, is it just called machine shape? Is it? Oh, maybe because, no, machine figure, okay. May I guess it's because we're probably the, um, the transhumanist that's going for the machine. So, cubist figure. Again, we'll bring in squares and cubes. Hmm. Maybe this one. Arc. Archaic Arco Nexus. How about Archic? Archic figure. I don't know if that makes any sense as a as a word, but we're gonna go with it. Um, I don't mind a statue. Nexologist image? You know what? I think that's fine. We're going to... We're going to remove the slice cap. And then for hair... You know what? We're going to go ahead and enable everything on. Mm, maybe not the soldier cut. Right now, we're going to leave miscellaneous and cultist to never. Yeah, that's fine. Minimal beard is going to be normal, but everything else comes up from time to time. Maybe not the first skin so much? Oh, no, no. That's fine. Everything else... Yeah. I think that's groovy. Now, if something goes wrong, just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and save this so we can recreate it very easily for us if something goes wrong with our start. I like that. I mean, nothing super exciting going on with our ideology, 
but it's going to be fine. And yeah, we're going to see how quickly we can rush up to a nutrient paste dispenser. Now we have to do the rest of our setup here, which is getting our peeps going. Now, I believe with the scenario I set it, I did make sure that the age is restricted to 20 to 30. Just that makes things a little bit easier. Now, we're going to go ahead and roll up hope for first. I am running the random plus mod, which allows us to reroll multiple times until we get something that we're looking for. Now, hope her only defining trait on the initial role might have been good social. I wanted someone who could be a good leader for our group and recruit people and, you know, be the advocate for the ideology. I can't remember if that was the only restriction I'd put in when we started. Now, Hope in our run had double passion for construction, had double plant uh, passion for planting, one tick in cooking, one tick in artistic, although she never really did any of it. I don't know if I'll set that on. I might just leave social on because I want someone who can chat. I think what the thing was with her solo start before was the idea of someone who could recruit. Oh, let me set a filter here to female for hope, please. So slow learner is pretty poor. Delicate is going to be really bad to start off with. Yeah, you know what? She was a fast walker. She was a fast walker and greedy before. Social intellectual. Okay. Not a whole heckin' lot going on with her, but I mean, we can, she can stay busy forever doing research. That's gonna be okay. These are not the same traits she had last time. And honestly, in the early, early game, maybe not the most useful, but I think we're gonna go with this. Okay, and so you are gonna be, let me actually rename your whole thing. You were Hope, um, Allison, I think it was. All right, there you go. I have, I have uh, some screenshots on the other screen for this. And yeah, you're just known as Hope. Excellent. So next up, I'm gonna have in, I think we're gonna take Smogger and Gomp. Now, I don't know if we're gonna go and make them a waster and a uh, pigskin, which is what those two were. Maybe, how hard? Let's say we do Gomp first. Now, pigskin is probably fine. Oh, yeah, we gotta be a little careful when you change the xenotypes because it does a reroll then. And if your filter, uh, this is mostly a problem when you pick a high mate. Since I have a filter set for shooting right now, um, and a high mate can't shoot, it would just use up all the rolls. So it can it can stay a little stalled there. Now, the pig skin, if we go into the xenotype editor and load up pig skin, um, they are bad at what? Bad at cooking. That's fine. We're not gonna need a cook. If, you know, because we're gonna go with the nutrient paste dispenser in this run again. Okay. Now in our previous run, Gomp, was a super immune, careful shooter, quick sleeper, who was great at planting animal work and intellectual. I'm gonna go, I will set you and ask for a passion for planting. And let's say at least a planting of at least four. I would actually like quite a bit better than this. But let's put in a minimum of four. And yeah, I would like you still be good at shooting. Let's randomize this. Cannibal nimble. Does cannibal require, you can already eat anything, but I guess here you'd be happy eating the, the meat. Uh, you did roll passion for cooking, even though you're bad at it. You start with human meat, which is interesting. Because if we were, I guess we, our meal rules would not include the human meat. Hmm. A pip in construction. That's useful since Hope doesn't actually have construction passion this time, although she does have skill for it. This could actually be quite useful. One of the things I often like is I like it when someone rolls both construction and crafting because then they become an ideal pick for a production specialist. Now that's only gonna matter if we add an ideological feature that introduces production specialists back in. Since we're going transhumanist right now, we don't have it. We could get it with human supremacy. I don't remember what else. There might be more than one. I think research specialists can only come from transhumanist. Um, and I suspect Hope will become a research specialist in this case here. Um, Okay, this, I mean, very useful, right? Even at four construction is a great place to start. We've got that, planting is gonna be useful. We actually don't really care about the cooking because again, we're gonna need a nutrient paste dispenser, although maybe you'll end up doing stuff. And nimble is kind of handy for dodging. I mean, I don't think it's gonna matter too much. I want, do you get bad traits if you haven't eaten in a while? I think that's only true for ideologies. Okay, we'll do that. And so the last person I was gonna bring is like conceptually, oh, I need to rename you to Gomp. Conceptually, I think I was gonna bring Smogger with us. Um, I don't know if I wanna start with a waster. It just seems like, cause I think the wasters have a psychite dependency. 
how quickly and dependently are we going to be able to start planting psychoid? Although, if they start with the dependency, I think they'll bring it with us. They might not list it here. That's interesting. Let me just turn both these off for a second before I... Oh! I, forgot, I still had this uh, filter set to female. That's fine. Gomp can be female this time. I don't know what they were last time. Doesn't really matter to me. If I set you to a waster... Okay, you will bring some Psych IT, or presumably Flake or Yayo as well as we reroll this. Um, that's probably enough for us to get a Psych IT replanted. Hopefully. So, in our last game, Smogger... Oh, right. Smogger was our construction and crafting passion person and was really well set up to be a production specialist. We'd also, yeah, the mining would also be useful because we don't currently have someone with mining passion. And we're in a hilly place. We do need someone with mining passion. Now, I think once you become a production specialist, I think it disables mining, but we're not going to be in that situation to start off with. If I set this, and actually, I don't necessarily need the construction side of it because we've got that covered. But we would like someone with some scrap, some crafting skill. And I don't, maybe I don't care about what number. Randomize, randomize, randomize. Actually, I meant to check out what exactly with the the waster. Or cook with the that's fine. Wake up imperious, psychite dependency, super immune, and obviously the lung stuff. Okay, we got someone who's quite good at fighting. We got an optimist, mining crafting, and some intellectual. You're starting with this flake and the gladius here. Okay, I think I like this. We don't have anyone with medical passion. Unless it's just so low, but no. Because I was going to say, we have someone with construction passion, although Hope is outnumbering them in the stats, and no one with cooking. Which might be a little tricky at first, because we might have to slap out a few meals. I think we're just going to have to force people to eat some raw food to start off with. Which won't bother Gomp at all. The rest of it a little bit more. And heck, Gomp is coming with some human meat, which is not necessarily going to work with the others. Oh, uh, and we got to rename you. So we will rename you to Smogger. What, uh, what gender did you roll? Male, female. And then, yeah, you were still forced on female. All right. So, I mean, we've got both genders represented. All right. I think this is fine. I think what I'm probably going to do, since this went a little bit longer, because I had more kind of conversations about our setup. Oh, yeah, and we don't drop from drop pods in this one either, just to be a little different. I'm sorry, did I start with a sun lamp? Why did I start with a sun lamp? Did someone bring something like that? Also, where's our psychite? Or did you bring something else? Did you bring flake? There it is. Under smogger. Okay. Did hope spawn with a sun lamp? What the hell we can... All right. That's very interesting. Well, we don't need a sun lamp. So normally the sun lamp, right, obviously is used to make greenhouses. Which is very helpful in areas where you get a lot of cold. This, we're not going to get cold. We're going to get year-round growth. Also, this, I mean, that's great. Just a few walls naturally make a defensive area over here. Well, I actually really like the start. Um, now, the sun lamp still has some value because some things like Devil's Ram, which is a very valuable crop, but takes a long time to grow. Even on places where you got year-round summer, I might still want to build a greenhouse for it to protect it from all kinds of things that might threaten that crop and kill it early, which is very frustrating. How some ever, I'm thinking what we do is we just deconstruct the sunlight to start with. That's really interesting. Anyway, we're going to go, I will go and put a cut in here and I will call this episode zero so we can start the actual gameplay directly from here. On a map, this map feels fantastic. Obviously, we're going to have to deal with insects. So be it. The best way to deal with insects is to have two or three good melee's and lots of good choke points. So we're going to want to make sure to design our base with something like that in mind. But, um... Wow. And one of the things that's nicer in 1.5 is if insects spawn in a room, instead of instantly destroying all the furniture, they will simply uh, minify it, or if they do destroy it, they will give you the resources back. So that's much less annoyingly painful as it used to be. We got a steam geyser right outside was probably going to be, well, what might be inside our starting base or outside our front door if we're mostly in the ground, but we will build the base here. Holy crap, this is a good spot. 
Folks, thanks a lot for watching this episode zero. If you are new to the channel, of course, subscribe. And in general, hitting a like and leaving a comment is really good for the YouTube algorithm. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>